I stand back on my tampon show a few years ago. You know, there's over 11,400 tampons used over 2,200 days in someone's life. And I mentioned, there's a lot of permeability in the vagina. And the FDA lists it as a medical device. That means chemical regulations like foods, drugs, and cosmetics are really different. Most of the testing, the safety testing is done by the manufacturer. That's a big conflict of interest. There is titanium dioxide in your tampons, and is it gonna kill you? All right, so according to TikTok and one of its influencers, Yes, you're gonna die from it, right? And this particular video has gone viral. Over 8 million views, to be exact, at the time where I'm putting this together. But this was in response to actually L tampons. You might have uh, bought those or got those. They have organic tampons containing titanium dioxide in the ingredients. And this influencer named Rachel Morgan, she said she knows of someone who uses tampons and has ovarian cyst and reproductive inflammation. So were tampons the reason why? Before we go into this, I wanna talk a little bit about titanium dioxide. A lot of people ask me about it because you might see it in the back of your supplements. It's on a lot of supplements, it's on a lot of foods. Now, according to the CDC, titanium dioxide is a non-combustible, white, crystalline, solid, odorless powder. Why is it used? Well, it enhances opacity, whiteness, that you're gonna see in the products. So where is it found? According to the CDC, you're gonna see titanium dioxide in paints, varnishes, lacquer, paper, plastic, ceramics, rubber, and printing ink. You're also gonna see it in roofing granules, rubber tire manufacturing, and other production of electronic components. You see it in dental impressions, all right? But also you might see it in cosmetics, food colorants, supplements, as I mentioned, glassware, pharmaceuticals, toothpaste, toothpicks. They're in Skittles, they're in cereals, they're in coffee creamers, gums, baked goods. They're everywhere. Now, there's different types there's a food grade and then there's the nanoparticles. The nanoparticles of titanium dioxide are gonna be found in cosmetics and personal care products. So is titanium dioxide a problem? Well, according to the International Agency of Research on Cancer, the IARC, they listed titanium dioxide as a group 2B carcinogen. So it's an agent that may be carcinogenic, but we still don't have enough animal or human research. The most concern on titanium dioxide is inhalation. So a lot of occupational issues with it. And there's also been some concern in the safety of it in our food products. So the NIOSH, the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, said that titanium dioxide is a potential human carcinogen. MAK, the Federal Republic of Germany, suspects this to be a carcinogen. There's been some case reports that have shown occupationally, when this is inhaled, it's causing pulmonary fibrosis and lung cancer. So I mentioned that it's also used a lot in food. And for that to happen, it must hit a 99% purity. And the problem is this, the 1% leaves room for heavy metal adulteration. So a lot of times you're gonna see titanium adulterated with lead or arsenic. Something to really keep in mind, especially if you're having a product that contains titanium dioxide every single day. Now, as far as those nanoparticles that I was talking about in personal care products and cosmetics, in a rat study, when they were exposed to nanoparticles, they stayed in the body pretty long, from 12 days to some organs, all the way up to 72 days in other organs. And that's not for 100% clearance, that's just a half-life, for that's 50% reduction from the initial concentration. So with that said, most chemical exposures, the concern we're seeing is not in humans, but in rat studies, and not through oral or dermal, but through inhalation. So granted, we're not inhaling titanium dioxide, but I would love to really start seeing more studies on the effects of long-term exposure to titanium dioxide orally, dermally, and not just through breathing it in. So the European Food Safety Panel concluded that although gastrointestinal absorption of titanium dioxide particles is low, it may accumulate in the body over time. We don't have any real long-term human studies on any form of titanium dioxide and how it affects us as humans. So based on the 2021 safety assessment for titanium dioxide by the European Food Safety Authority, they banned it in the European Union. And that's because they believe there's not enough evidence to say that it's safe. They concluded it shouldn't be used in food. And that's because it may cause inflammation and neurotoxicity, toxicity to the nerves. So I say all that to really get to this part on the tampons. So dermally on the skin, it's not believed that titanium dioxide can have a significant effect if it's poorly absorbed. And orally, there's a little bit of controversy behind that, but again, it's really through the inhalation. But as far as this particular scare with titanium dioxide and tampons, 
we have to think first correlation as seen in the video does not really equal the causation behind it just because this person's contact or friend had a reproductive disease doesn't mean the tampons are the cause as far as titanium dioxide in the tampon it's not in the tampon it's on the string so virtually it's not really coming into contact fully with the vaginal tissue if at all so dr karen tang did a nice response video to this and responded uh, to all the points that she believe it's nothing to worry about now i will say as a side note she works as a toxicologist in the fda and you know i have trust issues around the fda they are like the swiss cheese of care for america and things go right through and we're affected by it it's a mess so just because there haven't been studies on titanium dioxide and reproductive dysfunction doesn't mean that's not true. Remember, as I said, the vagina is rich in vascular tissue. So does this mean all tampons are safe for monthly use? No. Uh, maybe titanium dioxide we don't have to worry about. And I would say at this point, the way it's designed on the tampon and being on the string, it's not of worry, but there are worries about tampons and I stand back on my tampon show a few years ago. You know, there's over 11,400 tampons used uh, over 2,200 days in someone's life. And I mentioned there's a lot of permeability in the vagina. And the FDA lists it as a medical device. That means chemical regulations like foods, drugs, and cosmetics are really different. Most of the testing, the safety testing is done by the manufacturer. That's a big conflict of interest. And they're not even required to fully list the ingredients. But we know some of the common ingredients in conventional tampons are things like glyphosate. It's the dirtiest crop out there. And 90% of cotton is going to be adulterated with glyphosate. And I'll go into that in a second. And for the rayon aspect of tampons, they're utilizing bleached wood pulp. And it's really important to understand that the byproduct that's made, dioxin, is super toxic. There are also a lot of absorbency enhancers, like deodorants, or artificial fragrances, but back to dioxin. So number one, it's one of the most dangerous chemicals in existence. The EPA has no safe level. In 2002, bleaching tactics changed and reduced dioxin levels to negligible. The problem is, is that dioxin accumulates in the body over time, more and more and more. And it's really hard to metabolize and break down. NYU, one of the world experts on tampon, Dr. Philip Tierno, he said trace amounts are a concern they're additive and they can cause immune disruption, suppression of the immune system, pelvic inflammatory disease, endometriosis, miscarriages, infertility, diabetes, birth defects, breast and reproductive cancers, all from that chemical dioxin. So even though it's in small levels on tampons and a lot of people argue it's negligible, you don't have to worry about it, it bioaccumulates in the body over time. So we have to think bigger than going, oh, here is the product and here it's low, so it's safe. It doesn't work that way. The body doesn't work that way, right? Glyphosate, as I mentioned, if the tampon is not organic, you can almost be sure that it is adulterated with glyphosate. How much it's absorbed is in question. We don't know, but we do know about persistent exposure. It's not just in tampons. It's in the food, it's in the water, it's in Roundup Ready lawns, which you're being exposed to. Now, it leaves the body fully about 20 hours after exposure, but again, we're being exposed over and over. And we know for sure this chemical disrupts the gut lining and the integrity of those cells. It can cause a lot of issues in the gastrointestinal system like leaky gut. And we also know that Monsanto, the people that were behind Roundup or glyphosate in the beginning, now brought up by Bayer, they know the mechanism of how it affects the gut. They know the mechanism of how it affects non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And we also, one more time, know that the vagina absorbs a lot. It's permeable. It's highly vascularized. So, to wrap it up, is titanium dioxide in your tampon going to kill you? Probably not. It's in the string. Is titanium dioxide as a whole concerning? Dermally, less so. Orally, maybe. We need to see further. And through inhalation, yes. When it comes to tampons, should we be free and not worry about anything when it comes to conventional tampons? No. We should worry about dioxin in the bleaching process, and we should worry about glyphosate just being in the cotton, as well as different chemical fragrances. So with that said, just go with organic. You can't say conventional tampons are safe. You just cannot do it. Yet we can say we don't know yet. 
but why be the test subject? Just err on the side of caution, get some organic tampons. If you don't like tampons, get reusable pads. If you don't like reusable pads, try out menstrual cups. Check it out. There you go. That is my take on the TikTok viral video about tampons and my take about what I would recommend to my closest loved ones about information about getting tampons and being safe.